Hello everybody, I'm Michael Smiley and welcome to, back to my channel and welcome to my channel for all the new viewers. And so, I haven't reviewed anything in a long time, but I'm catching up on doing my reviews. I got a new cell phone with a new camera, I got a new tripod, new lighting, the whole nine yards. So I'm going to be deep diving more, way more into reviews. So I just did a Jaws 4K review and I just did Deep Blue Sea Part 3. Um, so I just want to get this out of the way. There are Trekkies and there are Star Wars fans. I'm just letting you know that I am both, but... Star Wars is a superior franchise, in my opinion. Due to its story, its characters, its worlds, universe, the whole nine yards, the whole... Everything about Star Wars is just... Oh. Like, I loved Star Trek, but my experience with Star Wars was so transcending and so different. And... Anyway, enough rambling. I'm going to review Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, actually. Because I did buy the whole series on 4K. So the quality, guys, is crazy, insane, crystal clear picture. All the special effects are absolutely... And the sets, the, the sets of... Guys, guys, guys. <sighs> I wanted to say God and guys at the same time. That's why it kind of came off like that. But, um, so first of all, let's start with the case. Obviously, everyone has seen this picture since it came out. This was the promotional picture. <sighs> so I know that the prequels get a lot of flack. Um, I, however, enjoy them. I enjoy everything about Star Wars. Um, obviously, I like some stuff more than other stuff. I think that the third one... Obviously, the third one got the best reviews of the prequel trilogy. But I just want to point out the fact that it's actually one of the best movies in the entire franchise. For a great number of reasons. So, this was <clears throat> kind of like the Empire Strikes Back and the fact that the bad guys win at the end. Um, with that being said, the bad guys really won in this one, sadly. But it separates it severely from the rest of them. Because everyone loves to see the good guys win and everything. And and that's all hunky dory and everything, but this is so severely changed up, and obviously it's due to story reasons and everything. So first of all, I want to just throw out there that Ian McDermott is one of the most amazing actors I've ever seen. He he is the highlight of this movie, and he owned. This movie, his portrayal of Emperor Palpatine, well, starting from Senator Palpatine to Chancellor Palpatine to Emperor Palpatine in the mirror of Hitler, was kind of really scary, actually, to watch. Um, but he plays the iconic role of Emperor Palpatine, and the way that he went from grandfatherly to pure, well, obviously he was pure evil the whole time, but he went from, you know, caring and loving old grandfather figure, or even father figure, depending on how old you are, um, to a downright psychotic evil entity is what I'll call him because he's not just 
like a person. He's an evil emperor of an entire galaxy that was responsible for the extermination of an entire race of um, a religious group, essentially. Um, <clears throat> but this one really did not feel like the other prequels at all. It, it felt like part of the original trilogy, but updated because... Not updated, I shouldn't use that word. Part of the original trilogy, but newer. Because... George Lucas went all out with this movie. Like, literally, he put everything into this movie. And he wasted no time doing it. Like, you literally saw... The transition of all the characters. Like, you, you saw and experienced caring, loving, good Chancellor Palpatine becoming the evilest, most manipulative, evil entity emperor ever throughout the course of the movie. You saw um, Darth Vader, the transition of Anakin to Darth Vader. You saw the this movie had so many things going on. It had the Chancellor becoming the Emperor. It had Anakin becoming Darth Vader. It had a backstory to... A, a little backstory to even Palpatine's overthrowing of his own master. Uh, or killing him, I mean, not overthrowing him. Um, it had... Um, it had love it had death it had action it had comedy it had romance it it just seemed like so many mixtures of everything and it was some parts were so emotional especially um after the luke and leah were born um bald on theaters i actually cried twice during this movie one was during the order 66 with the murder of all the Jedi throughout the entire galaxy and cried during that because it was so... It wasn't even just that um, Palpatine had ordered it to where the clones killed the Jedi. They, they murdered them as, as if it was a hate crime. Like, they did it with passion. They overly killed... And it was, it makes you so mad, but it really breaks your heart with the way that the scenes were um, put together. And um, John Williams is the greatest composer alive, period, end of story. Um, and he did such an incredible job with capturing the emotions and everything of every part of well every movie that he's ever done but especially star wars and especially this movie um he mixed a lot of different um, musical themes and elements in it and the story was great even though it was had a downfall a rise it had um life and death it just it was an incredible movie. Um, Owen McGregor is such an incredible actor. Natalie Portman, obviously. Um, Hayden Christensen, um, he has his moments where he shined. Um, and plus, I liked him. I loved him in Jumper and um, all those movies. Guys, this was just an incredible movie. Um, and I cannot, it cannot even be understated how much I love it. Um, I know that it's more dark and the bad guys win and everything, but it's just, it's so amazing. And especially in 4K, let me tell you how creepy Emperor Palpatine looks in his true form. Um, I think enough is said about that one. Um, it was such a, a grand... It, it was 
So, uh, on, on top of everything that I had mentioned before, one of the coolest things and epic things um, in the entire series and probably will ever happen throughout everything that has to do with Star Wars is, first of all, they have Anakin and Obi-Wan's epic duel, okay? And at the exact same time, they have the two most powerful um, force users um, on both sides and the two icon masters facing off against each other at the exact same time across the galaxy, Emperor Palpatine and Yoda fought in well, started in the Emperor's Chambers under the Senate Room and then went up into the Senate Chamber and a huge fight just ensued between Darth Vader and... or not Darth Vader, yeah. Darth Vader and Obi-Wan, but Yoda and Palpatine, Emperor Palpatine. And the way that George Lucas just intertwined everything and... Um, John Williams' epic music that was intertwined in that and the intensity of everything and just it was just so theatrical and so um, mind like mind blowing it was it was crazy um, everybody was on their A game it was it was so the fights were so incredible it was incredible watching, especially in theaters, because I watched it on the first day that it was released. And it was so incredible to watch it on the big screen, on the big theater screen. It was so crazy to watch. Because when I, when I used to watch as a little kid, The Empire Strikes Back, Yoda obviously was a character that stood out to me, and he was hilarious, but he was also somebody that you... It was ingrained in your head. Ooh, sorry guys. It was ingrained in your head how... Um, like, he didn't even have to do anything in those movies to know his importance. And it's ingrained in your head that he is this great Jedi Master, but it does not really hate you until he faces off with Count Dooku in Attack of the Clones, and that was the most epic thing about that entire movie. Best thing about Attack of the Clones is Yoda and Dooku's fight. Um, it was just so incredibly exciting to watch for the first time Yoda pulling out his lightsaber and actually fighting. And he fought his own apprentice, ex-apprentice now, um, but at this stage in Attack of the Clones, um, but to take it a step further and actually face off against the opponent, against your most powerful enemy in Emperor Palpatine, who was aka Darth Sidious, um, it was it was mind-boggling. I was more excited about Yoda fighting Emperor Palpatine than Anakin fighting Obi Wan. But like, I loved both. Obviously, they put a lot of time, a lot of effort into it, and it was just so incredible. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, I just love this movie so much. There's so many great things about it. Obviously, there's a lot of cheesy parts, um, but it's a good cheesy. It's not Sharknado cheesy or anything, and I know I keep mentioning Sharknado, but that is my irritation with... with Hollywood is that they make some really terrible choices in movies and Sharknado is just on the top of the list of being one of the most terrible movies I've ever seen in my life. It was not even entertaining. It was not even cheesy or that's a wrong statement. It was too bad cheesy for it to even be entertaining. That's how I want to say it. Um, this had like good cheesy like as in like 
Hercules of the Legendary Journeys and Xena the Warrior Princess kind of cheesy. Like, it was entertaining. And, um, just, obviously, if you haven't watched it and I just ruined it for you or whatever, <laughs> you know what's going on because you already watched the original, so you know that Anakin becomes Darth Vader anyways. I'm really not ruining anything. But, um, yeah, obviously watch it. Um, if you haven't watched it in a long time, I suggest you go back and watch it because you might view it differently in the second time around. <clears throat> um, and for those that don't like the prequel trilogy, obviously if you want to skip out on the first two, not suggesting that story-wise, but this is dramatically better than, than the first two. The Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. Um, and it really does stand up. And it stands up well. And it really does intertwine all the threads of the story. And everything does come into play. And everything it just makes everything flow so smoothly. Transitioning from the prequel to the sequel. Or from the prequel trilogy to the original trilogy. And it just makes everything flow... Um, and even into the sequel trilogy, it still, it flows. Even though that people don't like Ryan Johnson's version, now they will in the future. Um, because that's how it is. Everyone doesn't like everything now, but they like it in the future. Just like everybody gave horrible flack to the prequel trilogy when it first came out, but people have since warmed up to it for good reason. And... I wholeheartedly believe that this is the strongest reason. Um, because it's so theatrical. It's so entertaining. There's so much going on. The whole movie is just such a big movie that you just can't comprehend it. There's from the digital effects to the music to, oh my god, just Ian McDermott. Okay? Enough said about it. Um, but anyway... Trisha Bigger's costumes. Listen. This woman, Trisha Bigger, I believe I'm pronouncing it right, is the costume designer for the prequel trilogy. Now, no matter how much crap you want to give the prequel trilogy, the costumes were absolutely stunning. The music and the costumes were stunning. They were per so perfect, and it was. It's crazy how perfect they actually were. <clears throat> but um yeah she should have done the cast i know that jj abrams was you know is really good friends with his costume designer that he uses on other movies and he did that for the sequel trilogy blah 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 whatever trisha bigger should have been kept around for the sequel trilogy um, not saying that the costumes are terrible or anything. They were good. But for Star Wars, we need great. And Trisha Bigger was great at her job. Um, I, I just have literally nothing else to say about that because she was perfect for the job. Just like no one can replace John Williams. Literally no one. Um, he is the greatest composer, music composer ever period i don't even know if that's a, even an opinion it's just factual because it's he's that great um i have never heard from a composer the way that i've heard from john williams like he makes you feel the scenes regardless of how you actually feel he makes you feel them um he amplifies the intensity of the fight scenes like so crazy sky high just everything about it from the romance to the action everything about his music is absolutely incredible um that is one thing that has been consistent throughout the entire star wars franchise from one to nine is that john williams is probably not even probably it like he obviously is perfect at his job and he did perfectly literally the entire 
the entire franchise. So, well, at least the main saga. He didn't do the the solo Star Wars story or Rogue One or any of that. But they did, their composers did really good, but they are not John Williams. <clears throat> so, I think I've said enough about this movie. This movie is absolutely incredible. Obviously, if you haven't watched it, check it out. Um, there are so many different exciting things about this movie. It's just crazy. And the fact that James Earl Jones came back to do the voice of Darth Vader again was absolutely incredible and exciting. Um, the construction of Darth Vader's suit and when I watched it in theaters especially for the first time was so exciting. Um, when the Emperor's face changed for the first time, that was exciting. And his fight between Mace Windu and all, you know, the other Jedi and stuff. And obviously his fight with Yoda. Um, yeah, there were just so many great story beats and so many great elements in this movie particularly. That make everything else flow. If this movie didn't exist in the prequel trilogy... I don't think I'd feel the same about the prequel trilogy, but considering how well it blends the prequel trilogy in with the original trilogy and flows straight into the sequel trilogy and makes it all flow and work and everything, just makes up for everything that has to do with the prequel trilogy. I'm not saying that the prequel trilogy is great or anything like that, um, but I do not feel hatred toward it like some people do I think that it's so obnoxious that some people do um because there were so many great things about the um prequel trilogy that I can literally go on and on and on and on but I can also point out so many flaws about the prequel trilogy just like I can with the original trilogy it was not perfect no movie is perfect and no movie franchise is perfect um even though this one is pretty close. But, um, anyway, uh, yeah. The, the battle scenes, the space battle scenes and everything were so crazy good. Especially with the opening and the space war going on above Coruscant, which is the capital world of the galaxy and everything, it was insane. The special effects and the space, uh, the amount of spaceships, and you knew that something important was going on. And obviously, it was because the Chancellor was kidnapped, and so everybody was trying to rescue him and fight at the same time. So that was pretty cool because you got a space battle, a lightsaber duel, all of it wrapped up into one. So it was so awesome. <clears throat> anyway, um. That light is really bright that I got, actually. You can't see it, obviously, but it's, like, blinding almost. But... And I really love how they wrote this, um, the synopsis for this. So, it starts with, Discover the true power of the dark side. Clone wars rage across the galaxy. The sinister Sith Lord seizes control of the Republic and corrupts Anakin Skywalker to be his dark apprentice, Darth Vader. Obi-Wan Kenobi must confront his fallen friend in an epic lightsaber duel. Facts. Presented in thrilling 4K Ultra High Def. Or Ultra HD. Ultra High Definition. Same difference. Amazing. Yeah. and the picture and the colors and the quality of it I think oh, it's just so amazing so amazing but <clears throat> and this is an epic case I mean come on now and then this is the back of the case so it's Darth Vader and the Stormtrooper or Darth Vader and the clone troopers attacking the Jedi Temple or marching on the Jedi Temple, I should say. But, yeah. Anyway, that's my review about this amazing movie. Obviously, if you haven't watched it and you watched this review, I kind of spoiled a few things. But, at this stage, if you haven't watched Star Wars, I mean, what are you doing with your life? So, 
Um, yeah. Anyway, that's my review about this amazing movie. Um, let me know down in the comment section um, your thoughts on this movie and anything Star Wars because I love anything Star Wars and we'll talk to you about it. Even the pros and the cons and everything in between. Um, especially this movie. Um, let me know what your favorite moments were. Even your worst moments that you didn't really care for. But especially your favorite moments and um, how you felt about different things. Because Star Wars is such a beloved franchise and such a generational franchise. Everybody from your grandparents to your parents to you to your children. Everybody can watch them. Obviously, this one is a little dark in particular, and some things happen that kind of are not suitable for younger audiences. Specifically, what happens to Anakin. Um, but, and probably the Emperor's evil, horrific, terrifying face, true face, would probably scare a few kids too. But... Anyway, have a great day, guys. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel and, you know, comment below and let me know how you feel about this movie in particular and the rest of the movies. And, yeah, and we'll talk about it. So have a great day, guys, and stay healthy and safe.